Welcome back, everybody. How are you all doing out there tonight? So, wanted to sort some cards and talk about a few things, like my first impressions of Icoria. I was able to do one of the uh, drafts tonight, the uh, arena there. And I also want to talk about Watchy's big oops, or so they say. Is it an oops? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. And then uh, the mystery boxes, what's going on with those? And a little bit about the secret layers. So, just a couple little topics I want to kind of go over and talk about and sort some cards. So, so far, so first thing is basically, all right, now this guy's colorless. It's, do I put him in the artifacts with the colorless stuff or do I put him in the multicolor? Yeah, about that. We'll just make a little pile of his own there. <laughs> so, anyways, so. I drafted Ikoria tonight, uh, sealed actually, I did the sealed one, I didn't do the draft yet, uh, I haven't tried the live draft, because I just didn't have a lot of time, but I'm looking forward to that, I'll probably do that tomorrow night, looks like it may be fun, it'll be nice to actually play against some real players and not just bots or, well, you know, just, uh, the actual draft experience, I guess you'd say a little bit, because uh, we obviously haven't had that in a little while, and I'm kind of missing it. So it'll be nice to kind of do that a little bit more realistic draft thing. Well, so we'll try that tomorrow night. But uh, tonight I tried just a sealed, and so far, Ikoria to me feels a lot like, I think some of these were halfway sorted. <laughs> Oops, uh, it feels like, a lot like, believe it or not, Theros to me so far. Um, it really has that kind of Theros feel when drafting. It's like uh, a little little clunky. <laughs> it's got some really kind of broken combos almost, but it but it feels a little kind of clunky and not like the smoothest. Ah, bending cards. Not like the smoothest draft experience ever. If you know what I mean. You know, <laughs> not a. Uh, not really, yeah. It's not It's not as good to draft as Throne. My first impression, obviously that could change. It could just be, you know, could just be because it was a, just the one try and I just didn't get a very good uh, sealed deck or something because, yeah, I didn't really get a lot of stuff that I felt was really cohesive, you know. It seemed like it was a little of this, a little of that, but not a lot of anything functional together, I guess you'd say. So... That was kind of my first impression, was just that it's uh, it's very, very similar to Theros Beyond Death, as far as drafting goes. Um, it's got some really cool, powerful cards. It's got some some huge beasts in it that, that are, are fun if you actually get them out on the board, if they don't get countered. But unfortunately, they did my least favorite thing, and they added a bunch of more power to the blue control decks, which... I absolutely hate blue control. It's just not a fun playing experience. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, obviously I've built blue control decks in the past and whatnot. It's just, I don't like sitting there waiting for my opponent to do something just so I can piss them off by countering it, you know? It's not, it just aggravates people, you know? Blue is just, it's just aggravating with the counter spells. And if, if there's any color that's overpowered, it's blue control. I mean, blue itself probably not overpowered as far as uh, as far as power level goes, or damage level, or ability to do damage. Although uh, mill decks are pretty overpowered currently, <laughs> even in standard. I mean, I've had people mill my entire deck on turn like three, you know, in standard, which is kind of broken, <laughs> kind of a little too powerful there. Um, but the blue counterspell thing, I mean, counterspells are always just a little too cheap. But back in the early days, it wasn't that bad because there wasn't that many out there, you know? There's only a couple counterspells. So, I mean, it's like you couldn't build a deck around counterspells like people do now and control in general. Uh, you know, back then we only had counterspell itself and we had power sync, which was uh, an X spell. It was uh, a blue, one blue plus X 
And counter target spell unless his controller pays X, you know, so you could just make sure you had enough more enough mana to counter anything your uh, opponent tried to cast there. What just happened? What did I just do? All right, these are the ones that are already sorted. Okay, good. All right, I didn't mess up. First time for everything. So, <laughs> anyways, it just, uh, yeah, they, they kind of, they once again added a lot more counters, really cheap counters to blue. So blue is a little bit more broken than it already was in standard. And it's already just, there's so many counter spells out there. It is absolutely ridiculous now. They've just got too many. There's just too many counter spells and they're too inexpensive. Um, that gives blue a very unfair advantage. So I'm not big on that. Uh, I wish they'd have kind of not added all that to this set like they have all the other sets recently. They just keep adding more and more cheap counter spells and it's just, and powerful counter spells too with extra abilities. It's just getting very, very annoying. Um, so that I don't like. Um, but aside from that, I mean, I like the set. The set's pretty cool so far. Um, not trying to say I don't like the set. It's just draft wise, so far, how do I count? What? How to get in there? Uh, so far, it feels how like uncommon. Get in there, jeez. These are not sorted very well at all. Oops. Um, anyways, the uh, you're supposed to all be commons. Anyways, the uh, it just feels a little clunky draft wise, just like uh, Theros Beyond Death did. It's just not a very fluent draft kind of experience so far. Like I said, I just did the one sealed, so it could have just been a, a bad pull. Just could have been six bad packs, and. Uh, Maybe it won't be so bad when I actually do a regular draft and can kind of pick and choose what I want out of the packs. So we'll find out tomorrow night if it works a little better in a traditional draft style. But as far as the uh, the sealed deck that I did tonight, it did feel just very clunky like, uh, like Theros. It just didn't seem to draft as well. Um, you know, and it could also be that, you know, Th Throwing a Bell Drain was the set that uh, I came back into after a 12-year absence, and Throne is a very good set to draft. So it could just be that I've now got this kind of um, unachievable bar, you know, that, I, that the sets are having trouble living up to that have come out since Throne, you know? Because <laughs> Throne was a very good, well-built set for drafting. So... Maybe that one was just too good, and these others are just more normal. And I'm just kind of trying to compare everything to Throne. Uh, but that's kind of what it seems like. It really seems to me this set is pretty much exactly like Theros. Um, as far as how it functions on its own. As far as sealed and draft. Uh, it just seems to be very much, you know, they reprinted a lot of the same kind of staple cards, not the exact same ones as Theros, although there is some that are, that are in this set that were in Theros or Throne, but, uh, you know, just kind of the staple effect type things, like there's the pacifism, they reprinted pacifism in here, there was a, a pacifism clone in the last set, there was a pacifism clone in Throne. They've got these staple kind of cars that they keep reprinting in every set, and I think they do it because they think it's going to make the draft experience a little more balanced, but it just, it's kind of boring, to be honest. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah, you know, it's more fun if there is a lot more kind of unforeseen situations that you don't have an answer for, or that, you know, that you have answers for that you didn't have answers for before, you know? I prefer a little bit more versatility in the sets. That's why I wish they'd go back to the smaller sets. Because the smaller sets, you know, they had strengths and weaknesses. You know, it wasn't because, you know, they only had, you know, 150 or 200 cards to make a set out of. So you're going to have a lot, of, uh, a lot of gaps in certain sets. And that made, to me, that made drafting more fun because... You know, you didn't have to worry about seeing the same old cards every single week, week in, week out, no matter what set you're playing. It's the same old, you know, answers to this and, and that and the other thing that uh, that you're always used to seeing and everything else. Um, try, kind of 
you know, not finding the words I'm trying to express. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about as far as uh, just kind of seeing the same old situation all the time in every draft. And it, it just doesn't make the sets seem as unique as I, I would like them to seem, you know? Um, it just It's like, oh, look, that card again. Oh, look, that card again. Oh, look, another one of that card again, you know? It seems like it just they just keep rehashing the same stuff. But anyways, I don't want to dwell on that too much. Uh, I want to move on to other topics. But that's kind of my first impression is just that it, it feels just like Theros Beyond Death as far as drafting goes. Um, there's some super overpowered stuff just like Theros had. And then there's some really kind of blast stuff just like Theros had as well, you know. So kind of seems a lot like Theros Beyond Death to me, to be honest. That's just my first impression. Like I said, maybe tomorrow after I draft, I might change my mind a little, but that's my first impression. That's kind of what I felt like. Let me know in the comments how you felt if you played tonight. If you uh, felt kind of the same thing, like it's just just another set with a lot of the same types of cards reprinted and the same types of problems and the same types of, you know, oh, we got a couple of new really busted looking cards, but they just don't. I don't know, they're not cohesive in a draft type format. You pretty much got to build the deck around them to, to take advantage of them type deal. I don't know, there is some cool, the counters and the, uh, there's a lot of menace in this one. Uh, at least in the, the cards that I pulled, there, there was a pretty, there was one game where I actually had a pretty cool board state where I had a... Uh, you know, the creature that, that pumped up and he cre put a 1-1 one -one counter in every creature with Menace and, like, all my creatures have Menace, you know? <laughs> but, you know, the, for the most part, it, it seemed kind of clunky. Um, but, you know, let me know what you think, what you thought in the comments, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, uh, next thing up is Watchy's Big Oops, or So They Say. So, apparently, Watchy released a, a bulletin saying... Oops, we made a terrible mistake. We accidentally put three more Godzilla cards in the Japanese boxes and forgot to put those cards in the American boxes, the English boxes. Now, obviously we know Watchy's not exactly on the ball when it comes to quality these days. We have mistakes in every set, it seems like. It seems like every set there's some kind of mistake. You know, I mean, Theros, they forgot to put the foil land in the in the bio box promos you know uh throwing they screwed up the uh, showcase cards in the collector's boxes and stuff so it's no it's no big <gasps> a mistake watch you made a mistake you know you know we're used to them making mistakes they're pretty pretty good at it these days actually <laughs> but i really don't know if it was that much of a mistake and here's why as we've seen the War of the Spark, when they did the alternate art Planeswalkers in the Japanese boxes, the Japanese boxes took off like a rocket. The Japanese boxes are worth more than the English boxes by far because of the alternate art Planeswalkers. Everybody wants those alternate art foil Planeswalkers, you know? And I mean, there's no foil in the actual War of Spark worth $800, but the foil Lily alternate art is worth around $800. So... As we see, you know, I've opened a couple of the Japanese boxes on my channel. I paid $125 for the first one and got a hell of a deal at $117 on the second one. And I would never pay that for a regular War of the Spark box. I pay like $80 bucks for those, you know. So why would I, you know, I paid almost, God, oh, what, like 150% more to get the Japanese ones just because of the silly alternate art planeswalkers. And I think... And I, and I said this before in a video um, that I was worried about that. In fact, I think it was the first one that I opened that I was worried that they were going to continue to do stuff like that in the foreign boxes um, to kind of build hype around the foreign boxes more. And I was worried that they were going to continue to do stuff like that. And I think that's what this is. I don't think they did it on accident. Why? Because they're sequential numbers and they're the last three numbers in the set. Obviously, it looks like they made those three just to put in the Japanese boxes just to sell more of the Japanese collector's boxes. And the other thing that makes me believe that that's the case is the fact that even 
a couple weeks ago. You couldn't pre-order a Japanese collector's box for less than like $250, but you could get the American collector's boxes, the English ones, pre-ordered for as low as $185. I ordered mine for $185. I got one pre-ordered for $185, and then I, I just wanted to get one so I could open it up on the channel as soon as they come out. And then I'm going to wait and hope that they go down after release, which I think they will now, especially because you can't get those three, uh, you can't get those three Godzilla cards in the American ones and the English ones. So I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be trying to get more of the Japanese ones to spend their money on those and not buying the English ones as much because you can't get those. So I have a feeling that, uh, the prices will come down. Just like Theros, I mean, this set is just, to me, it just keeps ringing like it's Theros 2.0. Um, it just doesn't have the Theros name to it, so people aren't automatically turned off by it, I think. Uh, so, uh, frankly, I think I think Theros had some, some even better cards than this set does. Um, there is some really cool cards in this set, don't get me wrong, and I haven't seen them all yet, so I could be, I could be, you know, changing my opinion down the road here, but... Uh, I really like a lot of the cards in Theros, and, uh, you know, this set does not have a Lotus. This set does not have a Tudor, so Theros does. This set doesn't have the Titans. Theros did. I love Godzilla. I mean, Godzilla's, you know, an icon, but I think it's more about Godzilla and less about, you know, Theros had more powerful cards at the end of the day, I believe. But anyways, um, yeah, I don't think it was a mistake, <laughs> honestly. Call me a crazy conspiracy theorist and, and tell me to get my tinfoil hat on or whatever. Um, but it just kind of seems a little too convenient that it was just the Japanese boxes that got the extra three cards. And their sequential numbers and they're the last three numbers. Like like it was an afterthought. Like, like, hey, what else can we do to hype up the Japanese boxes so we can, you know really move a lot of those like we did the uh the war of the spark boxes plus there's the fact that the japanese boxes are already released they released on time um the english ones are not released because they got pushed back till next month so that means watsi can sell a lot more japanese boxes to the people willing to buy them because that's where they're manufactured so they're already available over there and watchy doesn't have to actually be open to collect a bunch of extra money from that so i don't know uh i may just be reading too much into it or a crazy conspiracy theorist but to me it really kind of seems like it's more of an on purpose thing to push the japanese boxes more and to get some more immediate like big volume sales during this month while they're closed down because this is all kind of a last minute type of thing you know it seems like there was uh there was so many godzilla cards a couple weeks ago and now there's more godzilla cards than there was a few weeks ago and of course they made the mistake with uh the certain godzilla card title um you know i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of people talking about. Come on, they did that on purpose. They you know, they knew what they were doing. Uh, they just wanted a, a a big hyped up cart. No, I don't believe so. I think that was total coincidence, um, complete coincidence on that one. The uh, the Godzilla death uh, kimono. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so I think that was complete coincidence because you know they do, they they print these cards up months and months and months in advance. Maybe even. They, they probably printed these cards up around the holidays. In fact, that may be what the problem was with the throne around the holidays was that they were they were printing these and accidentally forgot to reprint throne or something. I don't know, but, you know, uh, they, were, they probably printed these up around the holidays already. So, you know, because they, they have all these big, like, shows and stuff where they, where they announce things and whatnot, and they've been showing pictures of these for months of the sealed boxes. So... You know, they print this stuff up way ahead of time. So I think that was just a complete coincidence. Uh, I don't think they intended on naming it that. Uh, if they had, it would have been a mythic. You know, I mean, come on, let's face it. If they knew, if they purposely printed a card just to, you know, 
have some sought after misprint card just to sell more first first edition first run boxes they would have done it on a mythic not an uncommon that card's uncommon so if you're thinking about pre-ordering for a couple hundred dollars that stupid card don't do it it's an uncommon and there's probably a hundred thousand boxes already made up that are going to have that card at the uncommon slot there's going to be tens of thousands of that card minimum guaranteed it's not a $200 card or a $100 card or even a $50 card. It's probably going to be, after all said and done, if it if it stays at $8, I'll be shocked. It might stay around $10. I don't think it's going to be a $100 card down the road because they printed a ton of them. It's an uncommon slot. There's a ton of them. So, uh, as far as I know, anyway, uh, the only ones I've seen are the alternate arts. Now, they may just be uncommons in the collector's boosters. And in that case, then then they're they're probably going to be pretty hard to get. But not, a, not as hard as you think still. There's still not going to be a $150, $175 card. So stop wasting your money pre-ordering those. It's an uncommon. Uh, it's not going to be worth that much down the road. Uh, there's already tens of thousands of them printed probably. So... I want to kind of mention that. Uh, yeah, don't waste your money on that. Uh, so, yeah, that's Watchy's mistakes this time around. Um, let me just rearrange here a little bit. I thought I had more cards set set here ready to go, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> so, um, next up is the, uh, the mystery boosters. Let me know in the comments how many mystery booster boxes your LGS got that you're aware of, or if you know about any numbers like that. Because uh, apparently uh, I, I haven't gotten a reply from my other two local game stores, but my one local game store that I play at regularly every week, he says he only got two boxes, and for that reason, he can't sell them for the hundred dollars that I bought them at before even though he got them for free um he said he, he's he's charging like 130 and he said they sold immediately as soon as they hit the door which you know I can believe because people are actually out there paying 150 for them which is ridiculous uh so I, I did have more cards set aside didn't I there we go here we go we got a big old monster stack of our devastation we gotta sort out so um he said he only got two, sold them immediately at one thirty a box, which is very disappointing considering how much I buy that he would overcharge me on boxes he got for free. But I mean, I'm, I know he needs to make money right now. I, I've been saying it every every video, you know, go support your local game store, go buy stuff off of them, you know, make sure that they stay open, you know, because they're going to be struggling. Um... You know, so obviously I wanted to make money, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you're really going to, you know, I bought a whole case of them before at, you know, a hundred bucks a piece. You couldn't, you can't, you know, at least try to hook me up a little But You know, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, he needs to make money. He needs to stay open. So I'm not, I'm not like butthurt about it or anything, but it was kind of, eh, whatever. But he said he only got two, um, which is pretty lame. I know Watsy made the big announcement to, to make themselves look awesome that uh, they were going to give those to every to all the stores for free to help them out during this time. But then he only gets two. I mean, we're talking, you know, he got like, I think he got like probably eight or ten cases of them before. You know, because I bought a case myself and then there was... You know, we had enough to do a draft, and then there was a bunch of boxes behind them, and then I know at least uh, a few other people bought cases. So, uh, and then several boxes were sold that night at release. Uh, so I know that he probably got eight or ten cases at least the first time, uh, and then they only sent him two boxes on this run. So like, yeah, it's a little. Come on. Yeah, we're going to give them all to you, to the local game stores for free to help them out and then only ship out two to each store. What's that going to do? What's, what's two boxes going to do to help out a store in this kind of situation, Watsy? That's kind of shady. So I don't know if that's the truth or he was just trying to trying to not have to try and sell me. Yeah, got a damaged card there. He's trying not to, you know, just trying to, not to make it look like he's selling a bunch of boxes for 
a lot more than, than I paid for them the first time just to try and get a little more money out of me. I don't know. I, I doubt it. Um, I think it, I think he's probably being honest and he only got a couple boxes. And that makes total sense because, you know, they said they were going to give them all away to the stores for free to help them out. And then they only sent them each a few. It's kind of like the uh, secret lair thing, you know? Oh, we want to help out local game stores. So we're going to do this secret lair through the local game stores. But we're only going to give them a maximum of 10 of these. And we're going to let them sell them for $450 to poor saps that, uh, that are too ambitious to get them and not really thinking straight. Don't buy Secret Lair Ultimate, please. For the love of God, don't buy that. You can buy five or six original OG Onslaught Fetch Lands, which will always be more, worth more than these Secret Lairs for less than 160 bucks. You can buy play sets of the OG Onslaught Fetch Lands for $450. Come on. I mean, you can get entire play sets for less than that. That's ridiculous. So, yeah, don't buy the, the Secret Lair Ultimate. I mean, if you can find one at an honest local game store for $165, which would be unbelievable, uh, if you could and you want to spend that just because you want them, you know, I mean, it is what it is. $165 is not too terribly out of range, but yeah, $350, ridiculous. $450, asinine. So, yeah, don't spend that kind of money on those, please. Just, just save your money. Um, buy the OG cards. If you buy the cons. You can get, you can get like 12, 13 cons fest lands, which work the exact same for less than 160 bucks. So, yeah, buy real fest lands. Don't buy into the secret layers. Don't encourage this kind of behavior from Watsy. Uh, I hope literally nobody buys these at all and they just plummet in value because I want Watsy to learn a lesson from this that they can't break into the secondary market. I mean, I know it's not going to happen. I know people are going to buy them and it's going to be ridiculous. People are going to waste a lot of money. And they're going to lose a ton of money because these things can't possibly hold that kind of value. There's 10,000 of them being printed at bare minimum. There's no way they can hold that kind of value. If you spend $350 on that secret lair, I hope you're buying them just because you want to put them on the shelf and stare at them for the rest of your life because you're never going to sell them to make a profit. That is a pretty much a fact. Um, I'm willing to bet. <laughs> I'm willing to bet a couple weeks pay on that one. <laughs> you know? I mean, they're not going to be worth $500 five years from now, I don't think. I'd be pretty shocked to see that. So, yeah, I think that's a, I think that, that one's a total scam. But the, uh, the other big part of it is, so they, the, it looks like they're, it's not official yet. It's just a, a leak that somebody leaked from uh, Japan. Again, Japan. Um, but it looks like they're going to do a Godzilla Lands uh, secret lair next. Uh, which is, I think they're amazing looking cards. I love the artwork on them. They're just great Godzilla photos on basic land cards. Um, I think it's awesome looking secret lair. I'm not going to buy it because I don't buy secret lairs. But... Um, because I'm trying not to encourage Watsi to do the secondary market and, and shaft us all on the prices and everything. But they look awesome. The artwork is incredible. Um, but uh, it's five lands that look way cooler than the Fetch lands. Way better art than the Fetch lands. Same exact five cards. I think the Godzilla lands might actually be foiled too. And I don't think the Fetch lands are. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I don't know. I haven't looked at them too much. They kind of anger me when I try and look at them. Um, <laughs> so, you know, these are better land cards as far as looks go. They put more work into it, you know. They they had these, you know, they had to commission these, these great pieces of art from Godzilla movies and stuff to do them, you know. So they probably cost them more to make this set than it did to make the Fetch Lands by far because they had to pay rights for the Godzilla art. They had to pay rights to use the, the artist's work for those pieces of art and stuff. They probably, it looks like they might be original art, so they may have actually commissioned artists to do them. So they spent a lot more money on the Godzilla lands than they did making the Fetchland secret lair. But the Fetchland secret lair is a $165 start. The Godzilla Secret Lair is rumored that it's going to be $29.99. $30. So, 
So they spent more money making them, more money getting them ready to go, but they're selling them for $30, yet they're selling the Fetchland ones for start 165. That tells you right there that it's just the shadiest, scammy, McScaminous, <laughs> you know, on the uh, on the fetch line, the secret layer ultimate. So, yeah, uh, please just don't buy those. Don't encourage Watsy because they'll keep doing it. They'll keep doing stuff like that. And then we won't ever get good cards in regular sets anymore. They'll just keep putting them in the secret layers and trying to charge us an arm and a leg. You know, the reprints keep players that aren't hardcore players with deep pockets playing the game. You know, I mean, if they keep making it to where fetch lands and stuff like that that are kind of needed for the game to be competitive, so expensive that the average player can't obtain them, then the average players aren't going to keep playing. And that's not good. We don't want less players. We want more players. We want to encourage the game to grow. We don't want the game to kind of, you know, dwindle and die because only the deep pockets guys play because the rest of the people can't afford to play and you know those those deep pockets guys when they're all playing each other and on a level playing field they're not going to keep spending the money because you know those guys that spend the the really ridiculous money a lot of time do that for ego so they just want to take these really expensive decks out to magic night and just absolutely obliterate poor unsuspecting souls that can't afford to spend that money on cards it makes them feel better about themselves because they can afford those cards and these guys can't. So the more that that is encouraged, the more of those types are going to be around. And if they actually, if the regular players that they've been beating up on all these years quit because they can't afford to get those cards to be competitive, then it's just going to be those guys facing each other and then they're going to lose a lot. <laughs> and then they're going to quit. So everybody's going to quit if the if the average players quit because they can't afford to get their hand on the cards. So Watchy's playing a dangerous game with the uh, the secret layers here and trying to corner the secondary market and really jack up the prices on stuff like fetch lands that are really needed for the game. Uh, the more that they reprint those in more standard type sets, more affordable sets, so that the, the average players can get their hands on them and be competitive, the more players are gonna continue to play the game. The less they do that, the less players are going to continue to play the game, you know? It's just, it's just, it's common sense, you know? I mean, people aren't going to, people that aren't really super serious, or, or if they, even if they are super serious and they just don't have the funds to be able to do it, you know, aren't going to continue to play something that they just can't compete in. You know, it's like, uh, you know, these online uh you know, multiplayer games like uh, like Game of War is a great example. I got sucked into that one for a little while. And I mean, I, I was doing pretty good, but there was guys that were spending, you know, three to $500 a day to upgrade their, their uh, cities and stuff so they could just burn everybody, you know? And there's just no way to compete against that. And even though I was spending quite a bit, you know, I actually ended up spending a few thousand dollars on that stupid app, and now I have nothing to show for it. Don't ever download Game of War. Don't do it. You'll regret it. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> kind of reminds me of Arena a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't say that. Yes, I did. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that same type of thing. It, it was. It got to the point where guys like me who are still spending hundreds of dollars, you know, a week on it, couldn't afford to, you know, we, we couldn't compete because there's guys spending thousands of dollars a week on the game, you know? And then everybody just quit. It was like, just all of a sudden, like, it just kind of, it started off slow. People kind of dropped here and there, and but some of us kept going. We're like, no, we got it. We can handle this. You know, we're better players than them. They got more money, but we're better players. And it just got to the point where it was pay to play, and, you know, they, they were spending the big bucks and buying all the hot new stuff, every new pack that came out, they were on top of it and buying it as soon as it came out, and they were just going around burning everybody else that couldn't buy those packs. So, you know, Watsy's playing that game right now. They're playing they're playing that game to where it's getting to the point where it's going to be tough for the average player to compete because they just don't have deep enough pockets to buy the cards they need to be competitive. And if it gets to that little breaking point, and it's, it wasn't a, 
with that game, it wasn't a quick kind of thing. It was, it, we didn't even see it coming. It just kind of snuck up on us. You know, it just kept, they kept releasing packs that were a little bit more powerful, a little bit more powerful. And these big spenders were spending a lot of money to upgrade. And it just got to the point where if you weren't spending $100 a day, you, you weren't keeping up because they were making so much money. They were releasing stuff too fast and it just, it just got out of control. And then, you know, all the, all the mid-grade players that were really where the cream, the cream of the crop of their money was coming from, just like, they're like, well, we're done. We can't compete anymore. There's no point in spending more money when I, you know, I spend as much as I can afford to spend and I still lose, you know? And it has nothing to do with talent at this point. It's all about who's spending more to buy the bigger upgrades, you know? So Wizards has to be careful with that because it will it will sneak up on you and people will get frustrated and there will just be this, this point where it's just unobtainium, unobtainium, I think they call it in the, in the uh, sci-fi stuff, you know? It just gets unobtainable by the average player. They just can't afford to to compete anymore. And it'll kind of sneak up on you. You won't see it coming. It'll just kind of happen all of a sudden. There'll just be this threshold where all of a sudden players realize that they're just not able to compete anymore. And it, it you know, a few secret layers like this where they, you know, only the only the strong survive, only the deepest pockets can can buy the stuff. If they if they make fetch lands to to where they get to that point, like they've done with the dual lands, the original dual lands, which were very important, um, you know, I mean, if the fetch lands get anywhere near the dual land prices, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad for everybody. So they need to they need to kind of watch themselves with that stuff. And this hundred and sixty dollar secret lair fetch land ultimate thing is a really a, a quick drastic turn down that dark path to be honest from what the way i see it i could just be paranoid but that's you know i've seen it in other games you know <laughs> so uh it, it's it's just eerily reminiscent of what happened with uh with game of war there so so yeah and that game is completely dead now um uh I mean, it's not completely dead. There's still people in there playing and stuff, and I don't know what they've done, because I, I uh, actually uh, removed that app from my from my phone after all that. When I finally threw in the towel, I just removed it all, walked away, because I had a several thousand dollar account that was completely worthless because I wasn't spending $500 a day on packs to, to keep it protected and stuff. So, you know, I just got wiped out, I mean, Guys were getting so powerful, they could literally wipe out my entire couple thousand dollar city in, in one hit, you know? So, there's no point. I just deleted the game. So, and that was a game that I took pretty pretty seriously for several years, uh, you know? So, just kind of my opinion on that. Uh, let me know what you guys think, but I, I'm sure nobody's actually still watching or... 38 minutes into the video here. I had a lot more hour of Devastation cards to sort than I thought I did, so <laughs> I'm still going here. So I'm probably just talking to myself at this point and ranting to myself, but, you know, I do that every, every day anyway, so. <laughs> you are your own best company a lot of the time. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, I just couple one a couple topics I wanted to go over and kind of kind of touch on, you know, the my first impression of, of Icoria and my... Uh, which, you know, hey, I'm still going to buy a ton of Ikoria, don't get me wrong. Uh, it still looks like a great set. I think Theros Beyond Death is an amazing set. I love Theros Beyond Death. Uh, I think Throne of Eldraine is an amazing set. I love Throne of Eldraine. Um, so it may just be because I've got, you know, it's kind of, it's all brand new to me and exciting because I actually got to take part in it, you know, and, you know, but... I don't know. I don't. I, I wasn't able to take part in War of the Spark because it was already cycled out of uh, drafts and stuff by the time I got back into the game, which was just this past November. So maybe, uh, maybe that one's even even better than those. I don't know. Uh, but it's kind of from what I see. I, I really like the the new set. It's just a little clunky to draft. I think it reminds me a lot of Theros Beyond Death, but I don't think it has the staying power. In some of the cards as Theros does. I think Theros is going to surprise everybody. I think down the road, Theros Beyond Death is going to prove to be a really, really good set. 
<laughs> I mean, with the Titans, the Tudor, and the Lotus alone. And then there's a lot of other really good cards in there. So I think it's going to be a good set down the road. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Um, so, but that's my opinion on that. You know, I could be completely wrong, obviously. I just, just got back at the game like six months ago, so I could be completely wrong about all this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but that's just my, my opinions and my rants and my pointless meandering while I'm trying to sort cards here. So uh, I need to make a video and... Apparently, people kind of like these rambling and sorting videos because they actually have more views than a lot of my box opening videos. And times are kind of tight right now, so I can't afford to open boxes every night for a while. I'm kind of, yeah, my, my income dropped a little, so I'm not able to pay off my credit cards as fast as I was before to keep buying boxes to open every night. So I won't be able to do as many openings. I'm going to have to do more tech, deck tech videos or more... Uh, sorting and rambling videos and stuff so let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see that don't require me spending a ton of money i will still do at least at least a couple of box openings a week um and uh you know new products like the challenger decks and stuff like that as soon as i get them i'll open them i'm, I'm still buying tons of stuff just uh just not a bunch of bulk like i was to be able to open stuff like crazy so uh Anyways, let me know what you think about all these topics. Uh, looks like I finally got Hour of Station and uh, Ravnica Allegiance all sorted there, at least by color. So now I got to go through alphabetical. That sucks. But anyways, <laughs> really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your time. Let me know in the comments what you think about that stuff. And uh, hopefully you'll check out a couple other videos while you're here. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye.